Hi, I'm David Baker from the University of Washington. And today I'm going to talk about uh, crowdsourcing protein folding. So as I described in uh, my iBio seminars, uh, my group is working on uh, predicting the structures of naturally occurring proteins and designing brand new protein structures. And these calculations are very computationally intensive. So um, a number of years ago, uh, we had filled up every nook and cranny of my lab in the hallway next door with uh, computer boxes. Um, and we're getting into trouble because we were heating up the building, and it was very expensive. Um, and we were still didn't have enough computing power to accurately uh, predict protein structures or to design new proteins. So we, we started a project called Rosetta at Home, uh, which um, you can look up on the web and uh, please join. Um, if you sign up for Rosetta at Home, uh, you will, um, uh, when you're not using your computer, a screensaver will appear. And what that screensaver will show you will be the course of a calculation, a protein structure prediction calculation, or a protein design calculation that we've sent you. And so for every challenge that we have, whether it's predicting a protein structure or designing a new protein, we send uh, the sequence out to um, out to you if you become a Rosetta at Home volunteer. Um, and then uh, uh, Rosetta at Home volunteers send us back automatically the solutions. And those are, that's really the workout course of computation in my research group. And currently there are over 350,000 Rosetta at Home volunteers. And um, I hope, hope there'll be one more after you listen to this um, video. Um, and that, again, is really making, enabling the research that we're doing. So as part of Rosetta at Home, we, uh, we give feedback on the message boards for the project about the, uh, uh, about the progress of the research. And, um, and participants write in and uh, ask questions. And uh, we, uh, we try to answer those questions. I try and do it myself, um, but I don't do it probably as often as I should. But so we have a dialogue with um, participants, which has really been fun and has given me and others in my group an opportunity to describe what we do to the general public. Well, a number of years ago, Rosetta at Home volunteers wrote in and said, we're watching the screensaver. Um, we're seeing the, uh, we see the protein folding up. But um, uh, we've been watching it for long enough to think that the, the computer is really not doing as well as it could. If only I could get in there and sort of guide the protein to fold up. And I, I think I could get it to a better job. Uh, better job finding the lowest energy state. So this inspired us to team up with a group in the computer science department at the University of Washington to develop a, 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 it basically an interactive version of Rosetta at Home called Fold It. Now in Fold It, there's a screenshot of Fold It shown here. You see the protein molecule that, uh, uh, that, um, that we call the, each, each problem, uh, Fold It, each problem we're working on we frame as a puzzle for Fold It. So here, you see the protein chain. And um, uh, one of the big innovations near the beginning, uh, the, as I described in my iBio seminar, the uh, proteins fold to their lowest energy states. Um, but it wasn't a very good game when you were competing to get a lower score. So we took the energy and multiplied it by minus 100. So now the goal is to get a higher, end, higher score. Higher scores are better. And it's a folded as a competitive game. So you're moving the protein around. Fold it computes the energy. It's basically an interface to Rosetta at home. So it's computing the energy in the same way that Rosetta does. But rather than having the computer randomly search around, you as a Foldit player are, are doing the search by moving the protein around. Now, you don't have to do it all by hand. Uh, there are um, uh, tools on the bottom left uh, that are shown on the bottom left, which are basically Rosetta algorithms, which you can call to help you, which, for example, will find the nearest local minimum or search for a different confirmation of the side chains, which are these stick-like structures coming off the backbone. Uh, and um, where the uh, Rosetta at home only has access to, the, uh, to the, um, uh, these automated algorithms, whereas with Foldit, um, the Foldit player, and you can go download Foldit right after you finish watching this. And, and when you do this, you'll use a combination of, of, of your own intuition about where the low energy, lowest energy state might lie. And, um, uh, uh, and these automated methods. Now, this is uh, that what I've described so far is for a protein structure prediction problem. But um, 
But again, as I described in my iBio seminar, we're very excited now about designing brand new proteins that never existed before to address current day challenges. And Foldit players are indeed now designing new proteins. So um, in design puzzles, you can change not only the, where the, the geometry of the protein, where the backbone is, but you can change what amino acid is where. You can change the side chains. And uh, um, we've, I've been really amazed at the wonderful things that Foldit players have done over the years. And I'll give you some highlights uh, in the remainder of my talk. And uh, the, really interest, one of the, the really interesting thing is that Foldit players have made new scientific discoveries. And I'll describe several of these. Uh, the first discovery concerns determining the structure of a protein that's uh, uh, from a retrovirus protease that's prote uh, re retrovirus that's related to uh, HIV. In this case where um, the experimentalists had uh, collected experimental data but weren't able to take that experimental data and solve the structure because they were missing some key pieces of information. So we set this up as a folded puzzle and the puzzle started with um, a model which we knew was in the ballpark, but certainly wasn't the correct structure. And that's shown in red on the left. Um, and Foldit players form teams, and the teams, they, uh, they collaborate very closely together uh, uh, within teams and, and compete with other teams in a friendly sort of way. So this, I, these are, this is the result of um, a team, and I'm going to show you the results of three of the teammates. So the first teammate, named S.P. Vinson, took the uh, red model and was able to find a lower energy structure, which is shown in yellow. Now, in these diagrams, blue is the actual, um, uh, the punchline is going to be the folded player solve the structure, and that structure is shown in blue. Of course, no one, we neither, we nor the folded players knew what it was at the time they were doing this. So S.P. Vincent took the red model, got the yellow model, which was closer, and then handed off to his teammate Grabhorn, and Grabhorn produced the, um, uh, the magenta structure, and then finally, Grabhorn passed it off to Mimi, and Mimi ran the final lap of the relay. And you can see that uh, Mimi's uh, green structure is much closer to the um, actual structure in blue than was the starting structure that's in red on the far left. And when we got Mimi's structure back, we could see immediately that it had to be the correct answer because it fit beautifully the experimental data. So the data weren't, weren't sufficient to determine what the structure is, but they were enough, they were like a fingerprint. You couldn't tell what the person looked like from the fingerprint, but you could tell it was the right person when you had the fingerprint. So it's just like that with the structure. Mimi's structure fit the experimental data beautifully, and it was very, very exciting. The second example I want to give you is um, show you that folded players uh, can actually come up with new algorithms. So um, I cho told you that there were um, these automated Rosetta algorithms, that there were these buttons that you could click, and uh, folded players um, we gave the Foldit players the ability to create uh, what we call recipes, where, which are different combinations of these automated algorithms. Um, um, and these recipes uh, became very popular in the community, and many of them got to be very sophisticated. Uh, this plot shows um, the time in weeks from when we uh, first released the capability to, um, uh, to um, make recipes. Each vertical bar is the number of uses of a recipe during that week. And the different um, colors uh, or shades represent how many times each recipe was used. So some folded players are very public spirited, and they make their recipes generally available to the community. And others like to keep them for themselves. So as you'd expect, the people who share get more uses. And we notice that in particular there were two recipes, the one shown in red and the one shown in green on this slide that were really becoming very, very popular in the community. So we were curious about what these were. And um, I'm not going to go through the details, uh, uh, but the actual, uh, the actual, Rosetta, the actual uh, recipe for one of the most popular called Blue Fuse is shown in the box. And what we were really stunned by is that um, this Blue Fuse algorithm, which was taking over the population, was uh, very, very similar to an algorithm that we had been developing uh, in the lab for, this, for the same problem for protein structure prediction. And I won't go through the details of what it is, but let's just, but the colors, the yellow, blue, and red are different operations. And the, the um, algorithm we developed in the lab, which is shown in the middle, uh, middle column, has, you see this, this cycling between yellow, blue, and red, yellow, blue, and red. 
And what was, and we had never tried that before, and it worked really, really well. We were very excited about it. And then we found that in the blue fuse algorithm that the players had developed, it was very similar alternating between these different operations. And then we got, um, it was kind of sobering to find that in the context of the game, this blue fuse algorithm was actually better than what we had developed as professional scientists in the lab. So the final example concerns uh, protein design. And uh, we have, uh, for many years, been designing new enzyme catalysts uh, uh, in the lab, designing new proteins uh, to catalyze reactions which aren't catalyzed by naturally occurring proteins. And we do this by designing a protein um, using the methods described in my iBio seminar that holds the, the constituent chemicals in just the right orientation for the chemical reaction to occur. And when we make these proteins in the lab, um, uh, when they're successful, what we find is they actually catalyze the chemical reaction, and that's shown on the panel on the right here. Um, but uh, what's not so good about these design catalysts is the units on the uh, x-axis, rather than seconds, which is what a naturally occurring uh, enzyme would take to catalyze a reaction, this enzyme is a very bad one. It takes hours to catalyze the chemical reaction. So uh, when we looked at this design, um, and we looked at the model of it, we saw that we, it's sort of obvious what the problem is. The two chemicals are shown in these, these, uh, these ball-like figures in the middle. And one of them is the lower one is quite small. And uh, this designed uh, catalyst does not really hold on to these very extensively. There's not really a, a, a deep pocket that they fit into. And so these chemicals really don't bind very strongly to uh, the designed enzyme. Um, now, there are these loops of the, pro of the design that are coming out towards you that are in orange, and it sort of seems like you might be able to change them in some way to bind those substrates, those small molecules, better, but it's not really obvious to do how to do that, and you certainly couldn't tell a computer to, to, re to remodel the protein to bind the substrates better, the small molecules. But you can tell people that, so we asked the Foldit community to do that, and they came up with this solution shown in purple here, where they built this whole new part of the protein to come over and bind those small molecules better. And what was really amazing when um, we went and made this protein in the lab is that it actually catalyzed the reaction very, very much more rapidly, 20-fold more rapidly than, um, uh, than the starting design. So Foldit players had figured out how to improve this design that we had made uh, on the computer. And uh, when the crystal structure was solved uh, in Barry Stoddard's lab of their design, it turned out that it really folded up the way they predicted it to. And you can see the... The design is in purple. That's what the Foldit players came up with. And the crystal structure is in gold. And again, it is very, very close. What Foldit players now have done very recently, I can call protein art, is very beautiful. In this, um, uh, in this case, what they've done is taken an extended protein chain and with no amino acid sequence on it. And here, the challenge is to fold it up and to put an amino acid sequence on it so that it interacts in a very low energy way with other identical copies of itself. And so these are very beautiful structures, some of which resemble proteins which occur in nature and others which look nothing like that. For example, the one in the top left, uh, there's no protein uh, that looks anything like this. So we're currently testing these brand new proteins in the lab and um, we're very excited to see what the results will be. And I've been very fortunate again to have uh, really talented uh, collaborators, both um, in the biochemistry department and the computer science department who are responsible for uh, Foldit. And most importantly, I want to thank the Foldit players who are really um, opening up this whole new area of scientific inquiry and demonstrating that there's kind of been a, that, that these distinctions between scientists and the public, I think, are a little bit artificial and that really anyone who's interested uh, can become a participating, uh, can participate in scientific research. Uh, thank you for your attention.